What's up guys, Constec here, back again for another video. Today I will be sharing with you my review of the Red Dragon Harrow G808 wireless controller. I got this controller for less than $20 or 1000 pesos, and it's by far one of the cheapest wireless controller around. This review will be a little different, as I've been using this controller for 8 months now before switching over to an Xbox One wireless controller. So without much ado, let's get started. So this controller comes with a CD, a manual, a USB cable for charging, and a USB RF dongle. I like that it uses USB RF for the wireless connection because this offers lower latency as compared to Bluetooth. This controller has fairly decent build quality and a nice grip, thanks to the front plate smack finish. It's also very light, weighing at 186 grams. It has a surprisingly long battery life. I can game for about 12 hours on a single charge and it only takes about 2 hours to completely charge it back. It also uses the Synput API, so it works for any PC game that supports controller inputs without the need of configuring. From this point on, I will be comparing this controller to my Xbox One controller, which I have been using now for about 2 months. The face buttons are tactile enough and have a fairly deep travel distance compared to the Xbox One. The D-pad actually feels good and less annoying compared to the Xbox One's clicky D-pad. I have not played Tekken so I had a friend try it out and he said he had trouble with the D-pad being inaccurate sometimes and the face button having that long travel distance. He fails to time the combos because of the face buttons being a bit late in execution. I was curious with the D-pad because it has worked okay for me, so I did a simple test and it appears to be working fine. I guess it's just technique, and given the short amount of time I had him test the controller, it's understandable. He'll probably figure out the right technique had I let him use the controller for a week or more. I cannot argue with the face buttons because they have a really long travel distance as compared to a DualShock 4 or an Xbox One controller. If anyone here has been using this controller for Tekken, I'd like to hear from you guys as well so drop a comment if you would. The bumpers and triggers are positioned perfectly and are not hard to press as compared to the Xbox One's raised bumpers and deep triggers that offer some resistance when pressing. Well, some people like their triggers to have some resistance and have deep travel but for me, I'm okay with the Red Dragon Harrow's triggers being light to press and having a short travel distance. I especially like to use this controller when playing Assassin's Creed Origins because the light attack is mapped to the right bumper, and the Red Dragon Harrow's bumper is much lighter to press compared to the stiffer Xbox One bumper. The analog sticks of the Red Dragon Harrow are a bit stiffer compared to the Xbox One. Nonetheless, I did not encounter any issues with it on racing games like Need for Speed Heat or Asphalt. For the most part, I had no complaints with this controller, at least for the games that I play until recently, I have found myself aiming more on Assassin's Creed Origins and this controller has been giving me a hard time. We all know how difficult it is to aim with a controller but it's not an impossible feat. However, the Red Dragon Harrow completely falls apart on this. The analog sticks have a very small dead zone and after going past that, the controller begins to accelerate really fast and I find it hard to make adjustments with the aim. I can simply get away by enabling aim assist, but there's no getting around with making that predator bow arrow hit. That's when I decided to purchase an Xbox One controller and since then, aiming has become much easier for me. I just miss the feeling of the bumpers and triggers but so far, this more expensive controller does a better job overall. So there we have it guys. For a low price of about $20 or less than 1,000 pesos, the Red Dragon Harrow G808 has served me well and continues to be my go-to controller for some games. Despite the ridiculously bad aiming, the controller performs well for the most part and has proven to be a durable one. Also, its impressive battery life is something worth noting for the low price. However, it's really tough recommending this controller because for just a few bucks more, you can easily get an Xbox One or a DualShock 4 that performs much better than this one. But if you're on a really tight budget and just want to have a wireless controller to play your favorite RPG or racing game, 
then you'll probably be okay with this controller. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a like or a comment, dislike if you have to. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you won't miss out on my next uploads. And as always, thanks for watching and see you guys soon.